our next guest is royal editor for the Daily Mirror, Russell Myers. Russell, wonderful to have you back. Uh, there's been another popularity poll on the royal family and Princess Kate has passed with flying colours. What in, what, in your view, makes her so popular? Well, hi again. I mean, yeah, another day, another poll. It seems that we sort of can't escape them at the moment, and especially because we've uh, a lot of talk about slim down monarchy. Who are the big royals going to be sort of leading the royal family into the future? But of course, I think it goes without saying, doesn't it, that uh, Princess Kate has really shown her true colours. Certainly over the last couple of years, we've seen her really uh, centred down into the topics that are of real interest to her, uh, talking about kids' education, uh, literacy. And I think that uh, when you look at the change that she is trying to make, and of course, what she has on her shoulders, as well as William, there's an awful lot of responsibility. And because there's no more Harry and Meghan, obviously Prince Andrew has had to step down for obvious reasons, then, you know, her and uh, Prince William have an awful lot at stake. And uh, certainly the, the burden of responsibility is with them. But I think people see a human side to her, and that's possibly what has always been lacking for the monarchy. It's always been a, 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 bit, uh, a bit removed from real life. And, uh, and hopefully Kate is trying to make the, the royals a bit more modern in, uh, in today's age. And do we know how that is managed internally? And how do the other, how do the other senior royals, I suppose, how do they feel about that? How do they work around that? Well, it's interesting because I saw another story this week about uh, you know some former royal aides saying that King Charles gets jealous of Kate and you know her popularity. I don't think that is the case because I think that he welcomes the fact that he's got other people, sort of trusted lieutenants, if you will, to sort of shoulder that responsibility. Now, the, the, what we've seen recently is sort of a resurgence of their popularity because of the way that they're targeting the younger generation. And this always been described to me as the TikTok generation. It makes me feel a bit old when it is. But, you know, the, the new social media videos we're seeing, the sort of reach that they're trying to get to that younger generation, because if there is a degree of apathy with that younger generation, then the royal family could be in trouble. And yet, you know, the polls are that uh, you know, the younger generation is switching off. Do they necessarily care about the royal family? Discussions about how much they cost the public. But when William and Kate are, are sort of front and centre, it all seems to be going a bit more smoothly. And I think that the king, and certainly the king and queen, would welcome that association to uh, to try and give them a smoother path in their sort of infancy of King Charles's reign. So, um, yeah, I'm sure he's a big supporter of their work. I, w I would expect he would be as well. I see Kate and William as, as really central to, you know, like you said, the younger generation, the modernising of the royal family and ensuring their relevance going forward. Um, I, I feel like that's a pretty fair view to take. Yeah, you know, I think when we're looking at King Charles and now Queen Camilla, I mean, you know, they're both in 74, 75 years old, Obviously, the late Queen had a huge, huge legacy behind her, and the King really will try uh, as quickly as he can to try and cement his legacy. But we kind of know what sort of person he is. We know his interests and where they lie. And when you're talking about William and Kate, they are obviously the future of the monarchy. And now, you know, all this discussion about slim down monarchy, who were going to be the main players, I'm sure Charles would have wanted Harry and Meghan to be front and centre with that as well. But of course, that's no more. They've, that ship has sailed. And so he's he's got to work with what's at hand. And that is Kate and William being front and centre. And as I said, they've got a lot on their shoulders. So it's all about trying to work out what collaboration. I'm sure the palace will want to look at that moving forward. And uh, I think there's exciting times ahead because, you know, if they're going to be working more closely together, then surely that can only be a good thing. Now, we usually see members of the royal family a bit wrapped in tissue paper, but this week it was reported that Sophie took an unannounced trip to Iraq. How on earth did this come about? Well, you're totally right. I mean, this came out of the blue because it certainly hadn't been publicised ahead of time. But last week, the Duchess of Edinburgh was in Iraq and she was uh, visiting Baghdad, part of a trip with the UK Foreign Office. 
Um, it's, uh, it's called the Women, Peace and Security Agenda, part of a sort of a movement over the last few years that the British government is trying to put some more sort of charitable endeavours into the country after the, the conflicts of the last few decades. And why Sophie is uh, sort of more adept at working in this sphere is she's done an awful lot of work with charities about sexual violence, especially in conflict regions. We've seen her working in Central Africa over the last couple of years. And, um, you know, I, I think certainly she's been described as the royal family's secret weapon in the past. I think Hopefully, we will try and see a bit more of her work because it's always gone under the radar. I mean, we've had so much sort of scandal and infighting over the last couple of years, especially with the royal family. But her work is really, really very, very worthy. And I think that's uh, certainly worthy of more airtime. So, you know, it would be great to see uh, more of this work in the future. And, uh, and hopefully, hopefully, we'll get the opportunity.